Hi guys, welcome back to another GGF video review. Today we're checking out the Coolmaster V 1200 watt Platinum Power Supply. This is Coolmaster's latest power supply on the market. Well, it's actually not on the market yet, but it will be out very soon in Australia. Um, some of the main features is 1200 watt, um, so this is probably one of the highest power supplies you'll ever need. Um, it'll probably run three, maybe four video cards at once. Uh, it's got a seven year warranty, which is really, really good. Um, I think this is Coolmaster's first power supply that has done that. It's 80 plus platinum, as it says in the title. It has a massive 12 volt rail, a single 12 volt rail of 100 amps, which is really good. And it comes with a ton of cables as well, which I cover later on. And just one more thing, it also has an external little fan controller that goes in a spare uh, PCI slot, which you can change to auto and hybrid. Uh, so that's pretty much it. We'll jump in and we'll have a look and see what's inside the box. All right, we'll have a quick look on the box just before we uh, check what's inside. I won't spend too much time on it, uh, just a quick look. It seems that everything these days, if it's platinum or it's a special edition, they seem to use silver writing. So that seems to be the in thing these days. I must say it does look really good. Um, some standout features for this, it's 80 plus platinum. So this is the highest rating uh, mainstream power supply you can get. Um, it's got seven years warranty. I haven't seen that before from a Coolmaster product, so that's really good. It's got 100% Japanese capacitors, fully modular, uh, which is good. Uh, modular seems to be the main thing these days, so it's good that it is modular. And it's got a zero uh, decibels fanless mode silent operation. So um, in short, it's got a uh, sort of a backplate device that you can put on your PCI, slide out the back, and you can switch it between hybrid fan mode or active fan mode. So we'll go into that later on. Um, some specs are on the top. I'll actually read them out as I'm going over it. And there's the back there. I'm not going to go through everything now. I'll, um, I'll go through the different uh, areas once we start going over, over the unit itself. Um, so we'll just slide it out. It's actually quite heavy. Um, the dimensions on this are uh, 190 millimeters long, so 19 centimeters long. And that's pretty much your standard length of a power supply. Um, it's nothing enormous. Um, it's not like it's going to fit in most cases. It's actually relatively small. Um, for the wattage. Okay, so it does come in another brown box inside, which opens up over here. All right, so we have a insulation guide, which has everything on uh, you need to know to install it if you've never installed it before. Um, it comes with not one, but two cable accessory bags, which is really sweet. Um, it's always good to get those little bags. And for some reason, it has this massive oversized box, which contains some zip ties actually no sorry these this is the little fan controller so you can set it to auto and hybrid uh, when we install this into the system we'll see if we can um, tell the difference between this i might not have enough load on the power supply to be able to tell and then we have some zip ties and some four screws which is needed to secure it so not sure if that needed such a large bo large box but i guess they just did that to to sort of pack it out in the bigger box Alright, so moving on to the unit itself, and you can tell it's a quality product because it comes in a nice little bag. It's always nice to um, get those in a bag like that. I'm not sure why power supplies have started to come in a little uh, carry bag or whatsoever because you're pretty much never going to use it again once it, um, once it comes out. It's not like a keyboard or a mouse where you can take it places, but I guess it is nice. You can use this for something else. It's a really nice fabric bag. All right, so now um, just we'll have a look at this little uh, bit of text here. It says hybrid fan mode is intelligently switched on at higher temperatures only. So I guess if you have it to uh, hybrid on the um, on the switch, it's not just going to keep on running till everything overheats. So it is going to switch the fan on once the unit does start to warm up. All right, so here's the unit here. Really nice. Um, the 1200 platinum and is that reverse yes so you can actually see that they've, i do like it how they have the text up that way and they've got it reversed that way so when you have it in the system that way or you flip it that way to your preferred way the writing is sort of up the right way each time i really like that when they do that it's not a huge deal i just like to see the writing up the the right way um standard um au or sort of iec um, connector there um, this is the australian model so i guess it just comes with an au plug um, a nice large switch. Um, I do like power supplies that come with the larger, beefier switch, not the small little rocker switch. Um, there's no light, which isn't needed. Um, and then moving on to the connectors here. 
Um, we might cover those in later once I go over the connectors and once I plug them in to see how they feel. And there's your hybrid fan uh, sort of connector there. All right, so with the uh, the rail system here, we have 25 amps on the 3.3 volts, which is plenty. 25 amps on plus 5, plus 12 is a massive 100 amps. Uh, this system will be running anything up to three, maybe four video cards, probably not the highest top-notch video cards. I guess if you're using cards that draw in about 400, 300 watts each, it might be close. But for most people, this power supply will be plenty. Minus 12 is 0.5 amps, and your plus 5 VSB is uh, 3 amps, and all that is totaling up to 1,200 watts. Um, I've seen this in some written reviews. I don't actually have all the gear to test this. I might put some links down to some of the more in-depth written reviews and you can check out how much this unit can actually draw. I believe one, one uh, review site got up to about 1300 watts before it shut down. So it definitely can take a bit more than the 1300 watts. Um, also for the efficiency, it can take up to 93% efficiency at typical load. So I checked out that. That's anywhere, anywhere between 30, 40, 50, 60, 70% is your typical load and then going up to your 100% it sort of drops down to about 90, 92%, 90% efficiency which is still really good. Um, protection and the regularity, it supports all the, um, the mainstream markets for those so it does OVP, UVP, OWP and all of those. I won't get into um, all of those because uh, you'll probably have no idea what they mean but all I can say is this will support your latest Haswell generation which is good. And moving over to the connectors, um, we might actually pull those out and then we can go over which each one you get. So on the unit itself, we have two EPS motherboard connector outputs. We have six VGA outputs, five peripheral outputs, which are your SATA and your Molex, and then we have the 24 pin as well for your motherboard. Um, so we'll just check the length on those. Um, first off with the EPS connector, um, it does look rather long. So we have two of these all up. Um, and you'll notice on the connector side for the power supply, it actually says PSU. So every connector says PSU, which is kind of handy. And then on this side, it says CPU. So these are dual breakable to four fours, um, sorry, two fours or your one eight, uh, which is good. Um, so this comes with two of these. I noticed on the V850 that it had, had spots for two of these, but it only came with one. So I would say that that cable length there is about 70 centimeters, so that's heaps long. I can't see that not fitting in um, most standard cases. The 24 pin, I would say, is about 65, 64 centimeters, which is also really long as well. Um, and then onto your, we'll move it over to, where's VGA? VGA is over here. So with your VGA, you get a total of, I believe it is 12. So you get 12, uh, 6 or 8 pins. So you get actually uh, 6 of these lengths and they each have 2 on there. I actually really like it how you get 2 on the one cable. It's a nice thick, um, it's got a thick core in the cable so they're not real skinny. And you get your 2 connectors there and then they can just loop over if you're running 2 cards like that. And the length on this is I would say the same as the 24 pin. So that's about 65 centimeters as well and then it's about sort of 10 centimeters between the uh, between the first one to the second one. So you get 12 of those, which is really good. So that's enough to even run quad SLI. Uh, moving on to your peripheral, so your SATA, you get a total of 12 as well, which is awesome. And, uh, and this cable is really long. So what I'm gonna do, I'll measure from the very furthest SATA away. Um, so that's looking at oh, nearly 900, so that's about 850 millimeters, so that's 85 centimeters, which is humongous. And then going from the first, uh, going from the first SATA, you're looking at back to the power supply is about 460, and then they're about 10 centimeters apart. And then you get uh, four, how many of these? So you get three of these all up. So that's really good. And then moving on to the last one, which is the Molex, you get a few less Molex, you only get nine Molex which not many people sort of use Molex these days, but you still get plenty of them. And then that covers over to about oh, 70, probably 70 centimeters to 75 or 74 uh, centimeters, which is really long as well. And then the first Molex comes in at uh, 42 centimeters from the unit. And then they're 10 centimeters spaced apart, just a little bit over 10 centimeters. So you get plenty of cables there, plenty of options, plenty of length, which is really good. Um, I like to see massive length on cables because there's cases these days that 
um, that are so large you don't really want to have to extend them all the time and um, you probably notice that only one cable is sleeved with this unit so you've got the 24 pin and I actually really like not having all the other cables sleeved because these are actually really lo low profile you can run these behind motherboards you can run them behind anywhere so you can barely even pick that up on the camera it's so thin um, it just saves having the big bulky round cable um, we'll just have a look at the uh, little fan controller which goes in the back pretty basic just goes into a spare um, PCI slot cover there and then it's just hybrid auto or hybrid and that's it there so we're going to chuck this in the system this will be going into the uh, Cool Master Monster system it's got two uh, 780 Poseidons in it and we'll fire it up and run it at max I'm, I'm not going to be able to test too much of this power supply I'll probably just be able to check the 12 volt rails and things like that just to see how much it's drawing from the wall and then that'll pretty much be it alrighty guys so we've got the unit installed uh, just in the bottom down there, you're probably wondering what this enormous case is, and it's all red and everything. So this is our Cool Master Monster Display System. It uses the half stacker, and we needed a top-notch power supply to sort of be on display and to run these two uh, Aces Poseidon and GTX 780s. So you can see the V1200 Platinum; it looks good in there. Uh, we got the cables plugged in the uh, back, just what we need. Um, just another mention on the fan. At the moment, the fan isn't spinning. I've got it in hybrid mode. It's going to be hard to see. Um, if I put it in auto mode via the switch on the back, the fan does spin. Um, but in hybrid mode, I haven't seen the fan spin yet unless I'm doing a, a full-on torture test. So that's really good. That will only sort of turn on when you need it. Uh, just to mention the, the make of the fan, it's a dynamic fluid bearing fan by uh, Protechnic. They're renowned to be one of the top fan makers. Uh, they're known for their good quality fans, how long they last and how quiet they are. So top marks for Coolmaster for using one of those fans, which is really good. So what I've done here, I've just got an, e an extra uh, Molex cable run out to my multimeter. I can only really do a few tests uh, with the equipment I've got. I can't do too much, so I'm just going to do sort of some torture tests, just uh, sort of flog the system to the max and just to see how the 12 volt rails hold up. Alright, so I'm just going to do a quick uh, rail voltage test. Uh, at the moment the system is using about 100 or so watts. Uh, mind you, the drives in the background aren't plugged in, so it's just really just the motherboard and it's sitting at the desktop now, so not too much on the GPU. So I'm just going to run Fermark just to run these, uh, these two GPUs at max, just to see how, um, how it goes. So it's gone up. So it's actually gone up, so that's showing 12.39. So that's still really good. All right, and now at the five volt, I'm not even sure if the five volt is going to even change when benchmarking the, um, the VGA cards. Oh, there you go, it's gone up a little bit, so. No, I'm not gonna bother testing the 3.3. Um, it, it's gonna be a little bit harder to get to, but um, it, it, it's going to be fine so all right so that's pretty much it um, with this review and sort of coverage of this power supply as you can see um, it performs great uh, I couldn't do too much of an uh, in-depth review on it due to the equipment that I have but I threw up a link at the start to check out some uh, some other ones online which uh, people have more equipment for but uh, it's got plenty of power seven year warranty is great uh, platinum which is great so you're going to get like a minimum of about 92% efficiency from about 20% all the way up to 100% load so it is a really efficient power supply and it's also got that high quality fan which is really good to see so um, I want to thank Coolmaster for sending this unit out and uh, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time